This mini aquaponic system can grow a variety of plants. Now you'll see here we have some peppers, we also have some sugar snap peas and kale, we've got lettuce and cilantro growing in here. This system can be adapted to grow a lot of different styles of plants. Some of them grow a little bit better than others. Some things to consider are the temperature that you're going to grow in. What is the ambient environment? So some, some plants grow a little bit better in room temperature, like in around the 70 degree mark. Lettuce is going to be a really good one for that. Some of them grow better at warmer temperatures. For example, basil does really well in the high 80s, even up into the 90s uh, in terms of Fahrenheit. But you're going to want to try to grow some plants that, first of all, you want to eat or ones that are pretty to look at. So we can grow flowers in here, we can grow fruits, we can grow leafy greens and herbs, uh, we can grow other types of vegetables. You, know, you can grow just about anything in here. But things you want to consider is how easy they are to grow, how much light do the plants need, what is the rotation time of that plant. You know, if you're going to grow lettuce, it doesn't take maybe about 30 to 45 days to grow a whole plant in here versus something like these peppers are going to take several months to grow. Things to avoid, you might not want to grow corn because it's going to get bigger than the system is. It might grow taller than your roof, um, but small things are really good in here, but uh, it can grow a variety of things and it's all up to you and what you want to grow. We've been growing plants in here for a while and uh, actually I've had to trim back a lot of the plants here. So we've had, this thing's looked a lot more woolly and bushy than this right here. This is kind of tamed back. Uh, but you can pick some of those kale leaves off of there and eat those just right in a salad. Um, back here in the back we've got some sugar snap peas and I saved one right here for y'all so you can see it. Um, we've also got some cilantro and some lettuce growing in here. So lots of things that you can go through and pick and eat. So if you now if you look a little bit closer at this system, uh, we have uh, this, this gravel here, or this, uh, these clay pebbles. And these plants are growing inside of here. Uh, they, they wick up the moisture pretty well. Uh, you can see they're a little bit wet right now, just sort of moist to the touch. Um, and the way this system is designed is sort of a ebb and flow or flood and drain style system. And so we'll have the water going up and down all the time so we can get uh, moisture on the plant roots as well as some aeration and oxygen going to the plant roots. So that's really important for those plants to be able to go through a wet and dry cycle uh, for them to grow. Some plants really don't like wet roots all that much. So you need to make sure and get oxygen to those plant roots. Um, some people like to put worms in here so they can compost some of the, the waste that comes from the fish, but the you know, bacteria is doing a pretty good job of breaking that down also. But we've got about a half square meter of growing area here, and based on the number of fish that we have and the feed inputs, you can see how much plant biomass we're able to grow here. This system provides a lot of nitrogen out of the fish food. And so that's really good for growing leafy greens uh, and any of the green matter that we have growing in here. You can see like this, this pepper's doing really well. It's not just about nitrogen. You've got potassium and phosphorus that are also important. And our fish food doesn't provide quite as much, uh, it doesn't really provide potassium and it doesn't provide that much phosphorus. So you may have to supplement some of those nutrients in order to grow larger plants that have higher resource demands. Another thing to keep in mind is that we can have nutrient deficiencies in terms of iron. So you can see some of the yellowing in the leaves on these plants. You know, there's a number of different types of deficiencies, uh, but iron is a very common one, and we use a chelated iron to make sure that it stays suspended in the water column. Some of those lower value crops, you, you'd be looking at things like commodity crops like corn and soybeans, or um, you know pumpkins and squashes and those sorts of things. Things that take up a lot of space, uh, but they also 